whenever you have a design that totally fills your hoop, it is very important that you hoop perfectly straight. Up until the Luminaire, Brother used to send this template with each hoop so that you could perfectly hoop. With the advent of the projector, for some reason they decided we didn't need this. For the Luminaire, I have stitched a stipple design in the largest hoop on a piece of 8 gauge vinyl and I've also stitched a placement one on a piece of organza. The really wonderful thing about these machines with the design center built in is that you can go in, choose the hoop size that's the very largest. In this case, it's 10 and 5 eighths inches by 16 inches. The dream machine, you can choose this circle square thing, uh, go into the hoop sizes and choose the 14 inch by nine and a half inch hoop. Go in, we want to make sure that we don't sew that edge, so put that over. You can go in and choose stipple from here, Buck, bucket that into the center, go to next. And here I've got this set up for inches and I wanna change the stitch length to one tenth of an inch, which is basically 2.5. So I'll up that. And I will change the stipple to being at least half an inch apart. The uh, one fifth of an inch apart is just way too close together for any kind of quilting. By having it further apart, your quilt's more flexible and you don't have to hoop it so perfectly. In fact, you might even like to go up to three quarters of an inch apart. Oops. The other thing that's good with this is we will measure the quilt and you will try to get full hoopings across, but start in the center of the quilt but if you have an edge where it's a different size than what you've been using, you can just go in here and create the same identical stipple to fill the space that you want. So here we have a stipple, like I said, 2.5 millimeters or uh, one tenth of an inch for the stitch length and half an inch between each of them. And go ahead into that and convert it to an embroidery file and we've got that set to go, but be sure you put it into memory on your machine so you can repeat it multiple times. If you want a little variation between them, you can uh, rotate this 90 degrees between also. The important thing is to measure the quilt that you're going to be quilting. In this instance, this is 63 inches long by 47 and a quarter inches wide. As I've made so many templates for the Luminaire, I could just use my templates to see how many hoopings across it would take. But really, you should do it mathematically. Just take your 63 inches and divide it by the length of 15 and three quarters, or the width of 10 and a half, and decide whether you're gonna hoop uh, vertically or horizontally to get the fewest hoopings to complete your quilting of this project in the fewest hoopings and the easiest to go. But you can rotate a stipple 45 degrees no matter what you're doing. Once you have mathematically determined where the center of your hooping for your hoops will be, uh, you hoop in the center. In this case, uh, going sideways, it was three heights were a perfect fit. So that's the way I've chosen to do this. But you want to hoop close to center, but more of full hooping size effects where that center is. It's not an exact center. With this organza template, I can pin it to my quilt and try and keep the yellow line at the top, which is the topmost part of the stitch line, lined up within 
half an inch of the previous stipple because this stipple is a half inch as long as it's anywhere from a sixteenth of an inch to a half an inch away from the previous stipple you won't notice that you have a hooping line and the yellow line here is the center and I try and keep that with this terrible choice of fabric a very movable plaid and I'm trying to keep the plaid straight as I get ready to hoop this so my templates just going to fit into the hoop. once everything is hooped you want to check the back also to make sure there are no folds in the back fabric I have put blue painters tape right over the edge of the stippling I did in my previous hooping and now I've put my vinyl template that I've made uh, in here the vinyl template does hold its shape a lot better than the organza one and I've tried to keep all of my lines as straight as possible on this terrible plaid and next will be to actually put it in the hoop now before I take my plastic template out of the hoop I have rolled up what's going to be on the right side so it won't be in the way and the other side is just flat here at the luminaire I have another chance to make sure that I will not have overlapping stitches it's in this kind of triangular feature right up here when I push that it will turn on a screen that's going to show a grid work if I can't see that I can change the color. I'm going to move it on up, up all the way to the top so I can see my grid and my piece of tape. I changed my color of my background to really light so that I can see the difference here. And if you notice, my stipple is just slightly over the tape. So I'm going to need to reduce the length of this particular stipple and I think if I just reduce it slightly, you won't notice that the size of the stipple changed. So here I'm in the edit outside of embroidery, and I'm going to just choose to make it shorter by a couple pushes, maybe two pushes. Back in embroidery, I'm going to just move that slightly shorter design down with the downward arrow and then double check the grid work okay so here is the design over the tape and as you can see I see none of the stitches on the tape so I'm set to go you want your machine to be sitting on a large surface like this large sewing cabinet or in the middle of your dining room table you want all of the weight of your quilt to remain on this flat surface or you may want to roll up anything that is on the right hand side of the hoop area as you'll need to control that and this most of it, it we're at the bottom of the quilt and so most of it is on the front and i just made sure it's not going to drop off this table one of the first things you should always do in a quilt is do a needle down Grab the tail of the thread before you do a needle back up. From the front, we are ready to go. Uh, I think it looks like I need to straighten up a little bit more of the plaid to be happy, but we'll, let's go. Pause it just after you get going in order to clip off that thread that you pulled up. This is a pile fabric. Normally a pile fabric should have a topper, but because I really don't want this stippling to be a noticeable thing, I'm perfectly happy letting the pile cover up my stitches, therefore I did not use a topper. This one I've also just set at a two millimeter stitch length and half an inch between the stipple. The half inch between the stipple makes it less noticeable to see the actual hooping because as long as you're within a half inch of the previous stitches, the eye does not notice that they didn't uh, meet up at some line and continue to follow. It just sees that it's an even stipple all the way around. Another way to line things up on the luminaire is to drop the beam. See how it makes a little crosshair here and we can see it is close to the blue line, closer than half, 
half an inch, but not on the blue line.